Mr. Eby and Casserole is dumb. Scooby Doo Bop 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 I'm so sorry, babe. I just, I, I hadn't tasted him yet. I'm and sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Looking forward to, right. you right. know. Don't like, talk about the ingredients. I know. Yeah. After, it's just a surprise for your mouth. Yeah. Welcome back to Think It Critical. This is Wes. It's time for another comic book review. Today we're hitting DC Comics Superman 78. A comic book that if if Robert Venditti wasn't attached to it, I, I would still read it, but I wasn't going to be like, I didn't, wouldn't have had expectations for it. I, I like Batman 89 more than Superman 78. In fact, I, Superman the movie isn't my bag. I like Superman 2 a little bit better. But after reading this first issue, my mind is blown away. This thing is fantastic. It's not just for fans of that original Superman movie. This thing is for for um, Superman comic fans as well. There's some really cool hints into the, the actual Superman lore and comic books and integrating it into this movie universe, obviously, that was originated by Richard Donner. There's also a really cool um, you know, tribute to Richard Donner within the comic book as well, which I think is absolutely well done. You know, it's you know kind of heartbreaking that we we lost him uh, recently. Yeah, this thing's great. Obviously, it is Robert Venditti, my personal favorite writer. The man that I, you know, if you if you come up and ask me, Wes, recommend a comic book for me. And it's any comic book, you're going to get a Robert Venditti comic. Uh, the art is done by Wilfredo Torres. It's good. You certainly can tell who all the characters are. It's not the greatest comic book art in the world, but this isn't the killing joke. You know what I mean? This This isn't Batman 3 joke. It's not a comic book like that. You don't you don't need Ivan Rice on a comic book like this. You know the the premise itself is what's selling it, but you do need a good competent artist to execute the vision of the of the writer and to give you those nostalgic feels about the Superman movie. And it certainly does that. So it's really effective. And uh, I don't know. It's just so enjoyable. I didn't think I would like this all that much, like I mentioned earlier. But I don't know. Venditti's just he's got that that Midas touch. Everything he touches. Is just fantastic, and if you if you like the original Superman the movie, you're gonna love this this comic book. If you like kind of old school pre crisis Superman, you're gonna like this too because it's got some really cool nods to it. And then you know if you like them both, you're gonna love this thing even more than me. I'm giving it four and a half stars because I don't think the art is perfect. In the twenty pages read really fast and when i got to the end i just wanted more so i'm giving it a four and a half star but it's like highest recommendation if you want a comic book that you're going to really enjoy and love this is the one to read this week and this is a really good week dc's actually having a really good comic book week i read robin that one was fantastic what else batman reptilian was was not as good as the previous issue but it's still really good action comics i thought took a step down but between superman 78 robin action comics and Batman Rutilia, like it was a good week for DC Comics. And there's a lot of good stuff coming from Marvel Law as well in the indie scene. So this is going to be a really good new comic book week. Led off, in my opinion, by ba or Batman, Superman 78. I think I've talked about this enough. Let's get into the details and talk about this comic book. First up, we're going to talk about the art from Wilfredo Torres. As I mentioned before, you're not going to see the greatest comic book art, but it's certainly serviceable. It flows perfectly fine. You recognize all the characters. You can see you've got Margot Kidder's Lois Lane here on the left as she's, uh, you know, traversing through the streets as some aliens show up. And you get the big Superman reveal that you all wanted as he busts open his, uh, you know, his his white shirt and tie to reveal the costume as he jumps into action. You get a great scene of him, you know, flying with his fist out, just like you would have seen Christopher Reeves from the movie. The art's, the art's really good. It's it's not the greatest comic book art in the world, but it did need to to fulfill, uh, you know, what needed to be done in this comic book. I think uh, everyone's going to enjoy it. All the characters look correct. You know, we did get to see Lex Luthor in this uh, in this issue. I know a lot of people's favorite characters, you know, from the original Superman movies outside of Christopher Reeves, Superman himself was Gene Hackman's portrayal of Lex Luthor. We're definitely going to see him the next issue. I or at least we're, we're going to see it. It tells you at the very end of this issue. But you could definitely tell which one's Margot uh, Kidder's Lois Lane. You could definitely tell who's Jimmy Olsen. You can tell who was. Uh, you can definitely tell who's Perry White and all that stuff directly from the movie. So it's done very well. But really, 
we got to talk about the story because that is where this thing fires on all cylinders. If you love the original two Superman movies, well, I think at three they kind of fall off the tracks. And we'll talk about uh, Superman 3 here in a second as well because it kind of ties into this just a tiny bit. You're going to love this comic book. Like the, the dialogue between Lois Lane and Clark Kent in this, this comic is perfect. It feels like it's straight out of the movies. When you read it, you can hear Christopher Reeves talking as Clark Kent and you can hear Margot Kidder talking as Lois Lane together. It's fantastic. We hear... Uh, Clark Kent, little eight. You know how Perry wants uh, us at our desk by eight thirty sharp. Are you sure there's time for food? You know you can he- you could hear his kind of bumbling um, you know delivery that you would have got from Christopher Reeves, and then we get Lois Lane. They say breakfast is the most important meal. Two please. I'm not sure they mean hot dogs. You know Clark, you worry about Perry too much. Have some confidence in yourself. You're a pretty good reporter. A lot better than when you first joined the Daily Planet. Do you really think so, Lois? And we see a purse snatcher jumps in. She says, what? I mean, sure, Clark, yeah. And then, you know, you're also going to get the cool stuff where Clark basically is playing a bumbling idiot, and he's saving people at the same time, you know, behind Lois's back. So you get this guy that snatched the purse, and he's running, and Clark uses his his uh, heat vision to, to heat up the soles of his shoes and, uh, you know, and, and save this lady's purse and, and worth this robbery. Straight out of the movie. Perfect stuff. And also, when there's this big fight scene, and it's pretty good. Well, it's not pretty good. It's really good. Superman gets thrown through a building, just like he did in every single one of those Superman movies. I always love that part. Whenever Superman was fighting, uh, whoever he's fighting, especially in the second one, he's always getting thrown through buildings. And it felt like it was straight out of there. So if you love those movies, you're going to get the dialogue. You're going to get the interaction between the characters. You're going to get that Christopher Reeves Superman, like to the essence and the core of the character. The dialogue is just absolutely perfect. It feels like it's lifted out of that movie universe. Same thing with the Margot Kidder, Lois Lane character. Like I said, when you read this, you can hear the voices of the actors reciting these lines and the way that they would have delivered it from the movies. Because as I, I said, a, you know, Superman the movie is not my favorite. I do like Superman too, but those those roles and the actors in those roles are so iconic. Iconic. You wouldn't be able to separate them through it. And it's something I don't think Batman '89 delivered on as well. Well, not nearly as well as as this right here. This feels like it's right out of that movie universe. And that was kind of one of my issues with Batman '89 is that it didn't really feel that way. Like you could see the characters were there, and there are some really good. Um, foundation laying going on in that first issue but it didn't feel like you were coming right out of tim burton's gotham here you are in richard donner's metropolis and i think that's where it really succeeds but that's not the only place it succeeds if you are a longtime superman fan and i just we just reviewed these comics in our retrospectives a few months ago we get a really cool callback to marv wolfman and gil kane's new Brainiac story. Now, Brainiac is certainly in this in this comic book. He's on the cover. I wish I had paid more attention to the cover. I would have known this was coming, but I I, I knew I was going to read the comic. I, I just didn't pay a lot of attention to it. But when we see, or at least we get the first indication that Brainiac is in this comic, we see this half a skull ship. And I, I saw it. I was like, hey, that's new Brainiac ship. That's pretty cool. But then the Brainiac you see underneath him is clearly not new Brainiac. This is the you know the Brainiac that we come to know, you know, with the green skin and in the the headpiece with the the lights and stuff. I was like, oh well, well that's a pretty cool homage. At least you know we got the the skull ship, which I always thought was one of the better designs. Like Gil Kane knocked that one out of the park. But when the bad guy arrives in in Metropolis. It is New Brainiac. Well, obviously, this isn't New Brainiac, like from Action Comics 544 to 546. It's like a drone from the Brainiac in the story, which I think is badass. This is a straight homage from Marv Wolfman and Gil Kane. And I love it. It's executed so well. It was a nice surprise because I didn't pay attention to that cover. I didn't know this was going to happen in there. Interesting enough, they, I believe Su- Superman 3 is supposed to be like was supposed to at least originally have a Brainiac story. Like, he's supposed to be the bad guy. 
when Richard Pryor is like, he's got the computer and all that stuff, but it never really came together. I'm glad that they were able to incorporate some really, um, some deep cuts from some old, old Superman lore from Action Comics 544 to 550, 546. I believe 544 is an, is an anniversary issue. Maybe it's, is it 40 years? Hold on one second. I'm going to look. Yes. Action Comics 544 is the 40th anniversary of uh, is of Superman, and that's where they introduce this character. And clearly, Robert Venditti is a fan of that story. Well done, Mr. Venditti. I didn't see this coming. And then it's pretty cool. Uh, he defeats the robot eventually after he gets thrown through a building and kind of gets beat up a little bit. And the, the robot's kind of counting down, you know, sending some... Essentially, he took a scan of, of Superman and sent it back to the real Brainiac ship before he passes away, and you can see Superman saying, what's a Brainiac? I thought that was really cool. Obviously, they did find out that he was Kryptonian. And now let's get into that, because that's another cool thing that we see here. We see the introduction of, uh, of Jor-El and his wife as they're sending Kal-El off to Earth, and something changes. At least it's different from what we saw in the movie, and uh, something's happening, and Jor-El's like, Something is happening. <laughs> this is not correct. And I saw this at the beginning. I was like, I wonder what that's all about. I wasn't even thinking about um, exactly what was being portrayed here. But then when you see it later, we see Bradiac essentially miniaturizing a, a civilization, a city, placing it in a bottle. It's a bottled city, and it's gone back into his collection. They were clearly miniaturized by Brainiac while they were in Candor, And we've got the bottled city of Candor in here as well. Hopefully, when Superman defeats Brainiac, he can find the bottled city of Kandor and restore him back to their, you know, original sizes, and he can see his parents for the first time. Wouldn't that be great? I just thought that was this was a lot of fun. Like I said, if you it, the so much of the the dialogue and everything feels like it's right out of the movie, but you get these really cool homages to the comic books, like uh, Action Comics five forty four to five forty six, and Action Comics two forty two from Otto Bender. This is even older, <laughs> so. Really cool stuff uh, by, by Robert Venditti. And that is my review. I thought I just thought this was a gem. It was so enjoyable to read. The worst part about it was it was over. I don't know. Did, maybe writing these comics a little bit shorter does make them better. Because, you know, I, a lot of times you get these introductory issues and they're 40 pages so they can charge you a couple extra bucks. But you get to the end of it and you're like, wow, that was a lot of exposition. And here there's no time for all that big exposition dump. There is some exposition exposition but you got to get the battle in you got to introduce clark you got to get people some nostalgia based on the movie you got to introduce these uh, elements from the comic book and he had to do to do it in 20 pages so he maximized his pages used the real estate well and by the time you're done you're like oh my goodness all i want is more i don't always feel that way almost never feel that way about a, like those 40 page introductory like number one issues i don't know it's because this is playing on nostalgia and venditti knows exactly where he's going or if maybe the, the 20 pages just work better as a comic book for storytelling. They really make you get your shit in and get out and make sure that you don't waste any pages. There's no filler in this at all. You know, everything has a purpose within this comic book. And I do think probably the 20 pages really keep uh, Venditti focused. Not that I don't think he, you know, if they had 40 pages, I think Robert Venditti, because he's such a good writer, would make it absolutely enjoyable. But perhaps... Perhaps being a shorter page count than a lot of number one issues that we get played into its favor because every single page of this comic book is 100% enjoyable. There's not anything where you're like, well, probably didn't need that. No, it was all great. It all came together. And uh, this is why I read comic books. For fun stuff like this, we get these cool old minds. like, oh, my goodness, I just talked about this. I never thought I would see the new Bradyac. Obviously, we got the, the regular Bradyac in here and, uh, we didn't get to see Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, which is kind of hinted at by the cover, but we're definitely going to see him next week, next month, because it, it certainly says that you know Lex, Lex Luthor is going to come in and try and save the day. So this is a lot of fun. I liked Batman 89. I did, but it didn't feel like it was straight out of the Tim Burton universe. This Superman 78 absolutely did, and uh, you know it, it encapsulates everything that was fun about the about the chemistry between Lois Lane and um, 
and Clark Kent in those in those movies. You got the big superhero shot. You know, we got to save the day. You got thrown through a building, but we also got these wonderful tie-ins. So, job well done, Robert Venditti. You did it once again. I was like, you know what? I'm going to read this. It's my favorite writer. It's going to be good, but it's not something I'm going to love. Well, I was wrong. He absolutely destroyed it on this one. This is a great comic book. Do not miss this. Do not sleep on Superman 78 because you will be missing out on a very fun comic. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.